Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply. Let's make a baldric. This is the most comfortable way to wear a sword. And for us costumers, a baldric spans 3,000 years of history. Now we're going to go a little bit different direction. Let's take care of our pirate friends, because right here, this is a place that we have been lacking. We're going to add a pistol bucket to this. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. We're going to take you straight to the website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table, get started. We've got digital pics of our pattern. We'll look at those very shortly, but we're going to talk about what we're doing. That's going to help all of that fall into place. So let's start right here. The width of our baldric, I want a wider strap, two and a half inches to three inches, because we're going to have a sword, a flintlock. Who knows what else is going to end up on our baldric? As is always the case, the point is it's going to get heavy. I want to distribute that weight across my shoulder. But if you've never worn a sword in a baldric, hands down, the most comfortable way to wear a sword. But a wide strap creates a problem because finding a wide period buckle that we like, there can be a trick to that. But at Weaver, we may be able to help out there. We'll talk about that. But the point is, we're going to taper our strap. That means no matter how wide our strap is here, we can add any width buckle. Okay, next up on our angle, we're going to go 50 degrees right there. A little more, a little less, that's fine. But somewhere in that neighborhood is a comfortable baldric. Now, on our pistol bucket, I can't technically call this a pistol bucket. Back in the day, they were literally leather buckets. Had hair on flaps, very cool. So right here, the biggest problem with a flintlock, well, it's the flintlock. So we're going to make something between a holster and a pistol bucket. Now, a side note, if you have a flintlock on a rainy day, basically you've just got a pretty stick. Okay, so on our frog, if we've got a sword with a flat guard on it, which is common, we could always drop in our frog, a cinch frog right here on the body of the baldric. It's no issue. But because most sabers, most boarding cutlasses, rapiers have a basket on those, we're going to drop our frog below our baldric. And in fact, our handle is going to be parallel with our lower strap. And I've left these long simply to accommodate whatever width scabbard we're going to use. Okay. Now, how do we measure for this? And I promise we're going to go to our digital picks after this. Okay. So to measure for this, right hand draw, left side carry, left hand draw, right side carry. I'm right handed. If you're left handed, just flop your pattern. That's all we have to do. So I'm going to take a tape measure on the left side, on my left side, somewhere around a point about one to two inches below my belt, I'm going to start my measurement. I'm going to come up across my back over my right shoulder to a point halfway between the very center of my chest and the top of my shoulder. Now that sounds like that's going to put that buckle a little bit high. It is. Well, right here, we're going to have to drop in our pistol bucket. But secondly, a higher buckle on a baldric, to me, just looks very pirate. I can't say why. It just does. So right here, to measure for this, we've got that measurement. So for me, I think that's a 34. So right here, I'm going to add three inches to that measurement. Down here, I'm going to add six inches to that measurement. Basically, the distance outside of our V and our second hole. So therefore, our buckle lands on our second hole, going to be a perfect fit every time. Over here, let's come from that same spot and come across the front of us, across our stomach up to that point. From there, I'm going to add five inches. There's two inches there and there's three inches there. So that's the length of our strap, our blank. Okay, finally, let's jump over to our digital picks. So on our main straps, there's our measurements, width and length, and we've got our spread on our holes. On our lower strap, we've got three sets of holes in the middle. That's going to be where we attach our pistol bucket. On the pistol bucket, relatively simple measurements there. And over to our frog, same thing. There's all the specifics. Feel free to pause these at any point. Okay, so we've got a feel for what we're doing. Let's jump over to our main table, start cutting some leather. Let's go with our Weaver Select natural strap. I love this leather. We're going to add a stamp design. Well, we have to. We're leather crafters, right? We're, we're going to decorate. But weight-wise, I want something around a 7 to 8, maybe 8 to 9 ounce. I don't want to go too heavy or too light. It's going to be carrying a sword, flintlock, probably some pouches. 
Now, lengthwise, right here, I've got a side. This is eight and a half feet long. It's what I've got in my shop. If you don't have the length here, easily done. We can absolutely get creative. Let's cut smaller straps, rivet those together, but we could always cut some kind of a cool design, make it look like it was designed that way. A problem turns into a very creative answer. So on this, we're gonna go two and three quarters wide. I'm gonna set my wooden strap cutter to two and three quarters. And there we go. So let's strap out one full length here. And there's our strap. I will never get eight and a half feet of leather in this camera shot. So let's scoot this down. Good, now on our frog and our pistol bucket, we'll cut these down here. On this, we're gonna take these straps, we're gonna circle these around our sword, and then we're gonna tie these off with lace. I don't yet know what sword I'm gonna use on these, so I'm basically gonna cut a blank. I'm just cutting these extra length. So let's see if we can find a good spot to lay that in. Now with this, we can mark with a pen or a scribe. In all honesty, I have a hard time seeing a scribed line, even with all the light in my shop. So let's do this. Let's take our pen. Let's just take a piece of scrap paper. Make sure we don't have a lot of ink on the end of that. And now let's very lightly trace this in. Good, okay, let's leave that right where it is. Take our awl and let's go ahead and mark our holes while we've got this down. Now, using a pen, not the best way to go. But if we're careful, it's not bad. We want to cut inside of our ink lines. That's going to be more accurate to our pattern. But secondly, we're going to edge this. So we'll never see pen again if we're careful. Let's see if we can work our pistol bucket down in. Least amount of waste possible. And that actually looks pretty good right there. We've got that, okay? Now this is gonna be a little bit tough to cut with these angles from this side of the table. So let's do this. Let's just cut this piece of leather out. Then we can take our time and make every cut comfortable. Good. Now let's cut this out. Good, we've got those two pieces cut, but before we cut our inside lines here, let's step over to our punch table. We're gonna go with a round and punch. We don't have to. If we don't have the tool or the size, we can cut that straight across. In fact, that would actually look good because that would be parallel to the lines on the frog. But we could also cut some kind of a cool, intricate design. Something as simple as that we can get creative with. Now, one big point, and I just keep talking, but again, valid point. Right here, if we brought the width of our strap down and just continued to make our frog, what's gonna happen is we've got, we've got two strips here, but they're very close together. That means our sword can wiggle a little bit. So if we come out at an angle, we go from two and three quarters to three and a half. That's actually a pretty good spread. So let's punch this out. Good, now let's step back to our table, finish cutting this. And let's trim this out and we'll cut to size. And we've got that, let's pull that out. Nice, no ink lines to worry about. Let's trim this to size. Okay, so I've created a mess here. Is this common or is this just me? So let's reset, go to our long strap. We're gonna jump from this table back to our punch table a couple of times. The point is, this looks like a complicated project. It really isn't, but I don't want it to feel that way. So we're gonna do these steps one at a time. So let's start right here. Let's take our two long straps. Let's just cut these to size.
We've got that. Okay, let's come back and mark our holes. We've got that. Now, here's a little bit of a help on a larger strap. With a thinner belt, it's relatively easy to find the center for an oblong. With a wider strap, not so much. So let's drop it a mark. Left to right, centered, top to bottom centered. We can make a mark. Okay, we know where our oblong needs to land. Now out here for our taper. We're coming in one quarter of an inch from either side, and we're gonna use an English point to clip that off. So all I need to do here is mark at the top of our straight line. That's where we'll stop our cut. So let's mark the same way over here. And our straps are marked. Okay, so let's cut our taper. There are two ways we can do this. We're gonna go with the wooden strap cutter. And what I'm going to do is bring that right down to that point. We can also go with a square. And actually, that's easy enough. Let's simply cut from that mark out. I'm going to do my best. We need a quarter of an inch here. Let's see if we can keep that a good parallel cut. We can. Okay, so how about on this side? Let's use our wooden strap cutter. I'm going to come down to one quarter of an inch. Good. And now we can just pull that down to our mark, but we've got to remember our blade is about three-eighths of an inch in. So we need to go about three-eighths of an inch past that mark. But notice how easy that is. Well, there we go. I'm going to do the same thing to this side. And there we go. Okay, let's step back to our punch table. We're going to drop in our oblong and clip off our tapers. We can absolutely cut our tapers by hand. We can simply flip this around and with our knife cut these out. But we've got an English point. Let's go with a three quarter of an inch. So right here, I'm gonna spread those two pieces out and I'm gonna drop the very corner of the tool right in the top of that cut. There we go, same over here. How easy is that? And very consistent. Good, so while we're here, let's drop in our oblong punch. Now, the rule of thumb in leather craft, the width of our strap equals the length of our oblong. One and a half inch strap, one and a half inch oblong. Our baldric's gonna be two and a quarter wide. But the tine, the prong on our buckle is not that big. So one and a half, that's actually gonna be more than enough oblong for us. I've got my mark in the center. There we go, good, clean, straight oblong, nice. Back to our main table. We're gonna add a stamp design, and in fact, it's a design I've just been waiting for the right project to come up this is it. But before we go there, right here on our tip, I don't have an English point that's two and a quarter inches wide. So let's simply make a template. I'm going to take a piece of poster board, our width, two and a quarter inches. Let's scribe a line right down the center and bend it over. Let's come in half that distance, make a mark, and simply cut. We can freehand or use a French curve. But that gives us a very clean symmetrical point. Well, that's a good looking tip, and how easy is that? Okay, so our design, our stamp design, is gonna be about three inches long. We're gonna come in five inches from our top hole here and just work in five inch increments. Now, if we're not gonna go with a pistol bucket, we could easily get two of these designs on that strap. So let's start right here. I'm gonna come in five inches from our top hole, and let's do our best to center that mark two and three quarters, one and three eighths. And let's just drop in one more. That gives us a good distance there. Okay, we've got that. Now, actually this baldric's gonna look better from the back than the front. Okay, well let's counteract that. How about our pistol bucket? Let's drop in one stamp design, top to bottom, and I'm gonna center that right in the middle. There we go. Let's reset here, let's wet our leather, get this ready to stamp. We're gonna go in a little different direction here. If I'm gonna stamp or tool, I'm gonna to case my leather. Hands down, the best way to go. But that takes a lot of planning ahead. Well, we're doing a baldric and a pistol bucket. These are gonna get rough. I want them to get rough. That's the best way for these to look authentic. So we're simply going to wet our leather. But at the same time, let's give ourselves the best chance for success here. So with this, 
love are dressing sponges. They come in a larger sponge, but I like to cut these down, makes them go a little bit further. So with this, let's make sure that we use slow, deliberate strokes with our water. I'm just going to work my way across. Good. Now I want to get this to the point where that water just sits briefly on the top grain. There we go. Very nice. Well, first off, consistent. That's what I'm looking for. But also, we've got that nice chestnut color. So let's do this. Just like we were casing, I'm going to take a piece of our pattern sheeting, and I'm going to put something on top of that, maybe like our cutting board, just to press that down. I want that water to wick across that piece consistently. Now I'm going to move this aside. I'm going to do the same thing to this strap. But right here, pattern sheeting, I've got pieces cut for belts ready to go. I've given this about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. I can feel it. Doesn't feel like it's got enough moisture in it. That's okay. Let's see what happens. So we're going to start with a circle burst. And I'm going to do my best to hit our mark right on the nose. If we're a little bit off, it's okay. We're going to set our spot to our stamp and not our mark. But let's try to get close. Well, all told, not a bad impression. Okay, next up, our shell. Pirate Baldrick. We've got to add this, right? So let's add one up and one down. Okay, we've got that. All told, not bad. Let's take our axe head. Again, got to have this on a Pirate Baldrick. And I'm going to put this around our circle burst. Good thus far. One last stamp. Right here, this is a floral, but to me it's more of a camo stamp. Let's drop one in the top. Now, with this tool, this is hard to get straight because it's almost got a faceted bottom. So I've got a little piece of blue tape on there so I can tell which side is down. But let's do our best to get this straight up and down. Very cool design. I like that. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing to each of our marks on our long strap. We've got it. That looks good. That baldric's going to look better from the back than the front. Now, doing one step at a time saves us a little bit of time, but the bigger point is I'm not shifting my baldric around constantly. That gives us more of a chance to ding our leather. Okay, so let's give these two, maybe three hours dry time. We've given our pieces plenty of time to dry, a little more than three hours. They look dry and they feel dry. So we've got two decisions to make here. Well, first off, a Pirate Baldrick is not going to have finished edges. Well, it's coming out of my shop. It's going to have finished edges. But one of the parts of that is we're going to drop in a groove line. We'll use an antique. That antique will sit in that groove line. It's going to look good. Now, second decision. We're going to stack these. Okay. So we can do any combination we want. What I suggest, let's go with our front strap on the top, our back strap right there, and then our frog on the bottom. We need to know this because on one of these, we're going to bevel and groove the end. So let's do this one step at a time because this can get a little bit confusing. Okay, so our main strap, this is going to go on our front. Let's take our groover and I'm going to groove all sides. Not necessarily across here, we'll never see that, but let's at least do these three sides. In my groover, I've got this set at one eighth of an inch. We've got that. Okay, so with the number two master tool edger, I'm going to edge the three sides, same on the back. We've got that. Okay, so over to our main strap. I'm going to bevel and groove my top grain, except across the bottom. We can. If we forget, it's not going to be seen. 
Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to edge all the way around except across the bottom. We've got that piece done. Now we could split hairs because we're not going to see below this point. We could start our groove and our that just gets too confusing. Let's just run off the end. Okay, so over to our pistol bucket. Now we're only going to be able to see our top and bottom edge. So I'm going to bevel and groove here and across here. Good, we've got that piece and last, our frog. So we're not going to see anything above this line. So let's just groove both sides down, around, and back, and then edge the same way. And we've got that done. So next up, let's punch a few holes. Right here, these are going to be rivet holes. So on our revolving punch, let's come up to about the third tube, punch these four holes. We've got that. Okay, over on our main strap, for our size holes, let's go up to our largest tube on our revolving. And it looks like I missed it. There we go. Okay, let's punch these four holes. Good. Now, every other hole is going to get a Chicago screw or it's going to get some lace. So let's step over to our punch table, punch these. All we have to do is punch a few holes and we're ready to die this baldric. Can't wait to see this come out. Typically, on a revolving punch, the largest tube, that's fine for a Chicago screw. It's a little bit snug, but it's going to work. What I'd like to do, let's bump up a little bit. Let's come up to a 3 16 inch. Well, the biggest point is we're going to have three plies coming together. I want to have a little wiggle room there. So over here on our pistol bucket, we've got three holes on each side. And that is done. Looks good. Okay, over on this strap, we've got three sets of holes for our pistol bucket. Then we've got our four holes down here. And there we are. Okay, so I'm going to punch the holes on our main strap and our frog. There we go. Okay, I'm going to set us up on our main table. Let's dye some leather. As usual, we're going to dip dye our project. To me, this is the fastest, easiest, cleanest way to get a good, consistent outcome. The only downside, it uses up a lot of dye. So right here, I've got a hook made just from inexpensive wire from any hardware store, and I'm going to drag this through my dye very slowly. Let's let some of that dye drain off, and with a rag, Let's just mop up whatever's left. There we go. Now we just set that aside and walk away. So I'm going to do our other three pieces the same way. And our last piece, let that drain. Lay that out and let's just mop up whatever excess there is. Good. Let's give this about three hours dry time. I use the light brown pro dye in just about every video. I've got to apologize for that. I promise I'll fan out after this video. But on a pirate baldric, we need a good brown. I don't want it too dark because we've got a nice design on here. So we're going to drop in an antique. It's going to darken our brown, but it's also going to make our stamp design and our groove lines stand out. Now this step, we do not have to go this way. It's going to feel like a waste of tape. It really isn't. Because to me, there's nothing worse than antique wrapping around the edge and going onto the back of our project. That looks very unprofessional, but at the same time, that's going to rub off on us. So we're going to tape the majority of these, but we'll do these one at a time. Now on our pistol bucket, this isn't touching costume or clothing or us. So all told right here, I'm just going to add some tape to the top and the bottom. Now we've got an edge here. We've beveled our edge. So what I want to do... So I want to come in just to the inside of the edge, of the bevel. Yeah, there we go. And then we can trim that off as we need to. Okay, that piece is taped. Good enough. Now when we jump over here, I want to tape the entire piece top to bottom.
good, okay? Now over to this piece, same thing, left to right, all the way across the back, top to bottom. And that piece is taped, last up. Let's go with our frog, and all told, we really just need to tape from here up. Good, let's reset and add our antique. Let's go with a dark brown antique. Now I love antiques, they do all kinds of things for us, but the one problem I have with it is that I keep trying to get it consistent. It's not supposed to be consistent, it's an antique. So let's start right here. We've got two rags. I'm going to use one rag to apply and one rag to wipe back off. So we'll come across the top grain. That'll darken the overall color. Then we'll come back in with a dauber. We've got that on. Good. Now let's come back with this rag and let's just buff this off. Okay, we've got that. Now let's come back in with a dauber and I'm going to sink that antique down into my stamp impressions. Okay, we've got that. Let's take this rag and just buff lightly because I don't want to take all of the antique back out. Now we can come back in, if we need to, if we're a little light, we can always come back in because now this isn't going to get any darker on us since we've already covered that. Well that looks good. Okay, over to our edges. Let's take our dauber and let's cover our edge. Okay, we've got one edge. Let's come back, clean that off. And let's do the bottom. Okay, let's clean that off. Now we're not gonna see those edges, but that looks terrible. Why don't we just go ahead and hit these and let's just do our best to keep that from wrapping around too badly. And clean our edges off. All told, not too bad on the back. One last step. Let's get some antique down into our groove lines. Nice. Notice we can see that groove line. That's a nice edge. Okay, I'm gonna do the same steps to the balance of the three pieces. And our last stamp design, very nice. I am happy with that color and that design. Okay, let's give this about 45 minutes dry time. In that time, I'm gonna take our tape off, then we'll add our top coat. Well, these look good. The only downside, it's inconsistent. I seem to have trouble coming to terms with that. It's not supposed to be consistent. So we're gonna go with a leather balm. And again, we use this in every video. It's one of my favorites. I promise I'll fan out next video. But this is gonna give us a low gloss, but it's gonna enrich in our dye color. And we got a little wax in this, good for the leather. So I like to apply. We're gonna use two rags. We're gonna apply and we're gonna buff. So I like to apply with a fleece. This is the same material that hoodies and sweatpants are made with, but it's gonna hold a lot of our top coat. So let's get some top coat in this, not too much. I wanna go somewhat sparingly and slowly because I don't want streaks or bubbles. If we let those dry, we'll be able to see those. But let's just come in easily. There we go. Okay, let's let that sit right where it is. Give that about 20 seconds, in fact, Got some bubbles and some streaks right there. We can wipe those off. Okay, let's give that about 20 seconds. And now let's take just a simple cotton rag and let's buff this. Okay, there we are, that looks good. Nice gloss, not too much, not too little. So now over to our edges. Let's put some leather balm on our edge. Good, wipe off the excess. And now let's slick. I'm gonna use our slicker, the top notch here, but what the easiest thing to me is to let this hang off the edge of the table. That makes it very stable. And very little burnishing. 
There we go. I can feel that. It's rounded. It's slick. Looks good. Feels good. So I'm going to do the same thing to our other three pieces. Okay. That's a good looking strap. Looks good. Feels good. Let's knock in half a dozen spots. Then we're going to put this together. Typically a saber or a cutlass is going to have a brass guard and pommel. We can absolutely go that way with the hardware, but we're going to go a little bit different direction. Let's go antique nickel and we'll talk about why here in just a minute. But to match that beautiful buckle, let's go with an antique nickel spot. Now in our videos, you could say we've set a few spots, but if you're new at it, it's five easy steps. So I've got my stamp. I'm not necessarily going by my mark. I'm going to go by my stamp. Let's take a spot and let's press the tines in as centered as we can get it. Okay, good. So I can see both of those. Next step, let's take a cardboard pallet and our craft knife. But right here, notice I've got the longer blade on that. So with this, we're going to do our best to mimic the shape of our tines. So I'm going to press through from one side. Let's flip this around and press through from the other side. Good. We've got that. Okay, let's take our spot and let's push that through. There we go. Sits nicely in there flush. Okay, let's flip this over. I'm going to bend the tines inward. And one last step. I'm going to put this on my marble and I'm going to tap it. I don't want to ding it. I don't want to hit it so hard that I ding it, but two easy taps. Now when I flip that over, I can barely feel those tines. They've actually circled in, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing to our designs right here. We are set. All right, let's put this together. We're going to start by setting our buckle. And one easy step here. Let's load our buckle. Good. Now we're going to go with the medium double cap or the 5 16 inch in the antique nickel. Now we can let the loop, the bend back, hang off of our table here. That's going to allow us to get a more clean set. But right there, pattern, those line up perfectly. Looking good thus far. Let's go back to our main table, drop in our pistol bucket. We're going to wrap our pistol bucket around on the strap. So let's do this. Let's make it a little easier on ourselves. Let's take our bucket and let's just roll this as best we can. Good. That's going to give us a little bit of help. It's stiff. It's going to soften up with a little use. Okay. So we're going to go two, eight to nine back to back. So let's go with our one quarter inch Chicago screw or screw post. Now I'm going to use a little of the Leathercraft cement. These are bad about working themselves out and quickly, but I just want to tack this in. I don't want to weld them in in case I have to replace a piece or part. So let's take six of these and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the female side. And one more. Okay. So we've got a top coat on our leather. So if we get a little bit of glue on that, it's going to come right off. Over here, we're going to circle around. Our bow is going to be towards our buckle. So let's come in from the inside here. Good, we've got that. So on this, let's drop this flat. We're going to go to this side. So let's drop our pistol bucket flat. Let's bring our strap over to the top of that. And our screws fit perfectly very nice. One of the great things about a Chicago screw, or again the screw post from Weaver, is that right here we've got an Allen wrench slot. Makes that so easy. If you've ever tried to put these in with a screwdriver, it can be done, but it keeps slipping out of the slot. This, make it, this makes it so easy. And that side is done. Okay, over to this side. Coming in from the inside. Good. Okay, now we're going to have to work with this a little bit because we're going to bend this all the way around. Let's start with one screw. And let's screw that in. And the next. 
And that one took a little bit of doing. This last one will be much easier. And every screw is tight, very nice, just like today. There were so many types and shapes of flint lock. There we go. That sits in there nicely, triggers protected. And again, as we use this, it's gonna loosen up, soften up a little bit. Okay, let's reset here, work on our frog. Let's fit our frog to our scabbard before we attach this to the baldric. Just make it easier on ourselves. Now there's one boarding cutlass out there that I'd like to add to my collection. They no longer make it. I'll find one. But between here and there, how about we go with a rapier? This is the perfect frog for that. We've got a basket. So let's take our, our scabbard. Now, the downside to a rapier, thin blade, thin scabbard. We're gonna have to trim some of this off. But let's lay this in, give or take, maybe quarter inch, three eighths of an inch below this hole. Let's circle one arm around. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna make a mark almost right above that. That's gonna be tight. Actually, that's what I'm looking for. So let's make a mark there. Then we'll measure for our second mark. So let's do the same thing here. Good, we've got that. So let's flip this over. Now let's come out three quarters of an inch away. Good, okay, let's punch those, and we can punch this. We'll use lace here, so we can punch this. Yeah, if you can find what you can do with those, some positive use for those, you'll be the hero of the Leathercraft community. So let's punch these. Okay, that's done. So let's reset, let's put it together. We're gonna go through three plies of eight to nine ounce. So we're gonna go up to the three eighths inch Chicago screw, the longest of the double cap rivets. The seven sixteenths will absolutely do it. But with our screws, we get both strength and length. So on four of these, let's add some glue. And we've got that. Okay, so this strap is gonna be on the face. Okay, let's flip this over. Flip this strap over, and now let's see how these holes fit together. Perfect, just what we're looking for. Okay, one more to go though. And very nice, we've got a good pattern. And those are tight. We took our time, we've got a good pattern, and it makes something like this a non-issue. Okay, one more reset, and we are done. We're gonna need some strength with our lace here, so let's go with our Latigo lace. Now, we've got this in a number of colors, actually one that would be a perfect match to this, but I like that dark brown. So let's add this, it's gonna actually bring that out a little bit, it's gonna look good. So our first step here, let's cut a point on each of the ends of our lace. Good, we've got that. Now we could come through the front to tie this and we would just see this small piece of lace. But what I'd like to do, let's come from the back. We'll tie our knot on the front and then our lace is gonna hang down. To me, that looks very rustic. So on our back, let's come through both holes. That's done. So let's insert our scabbard. And now on both of these, I'm really gonna crank these down. We're gonna tie a square knot right there. So right over left, circle around, draw down tight. Now left over right, circle around and draw down. Left over right and draw that down. Good. Our scabbard's not loose, but it's not incredibly tight. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm gonna add a sword, a gun. Let's see how this fits. As pirate costumes go, I'm a little bit lacking, but a baldric is a great place to start. Big point here, when I put the gun in the baldric, the sword in, this gets to be a heavy rig. I put it on my shoulder, feels like about 10% of the weight, very comfortable. Also right here, Perfect place to rest my hand and my sword tip not sticking out too far. I hope your baldric is beautiful, 
fits perfectly and you have a great time making it, good luck with your projects.